Let's pray. Father God, may the words I speak be those you wish spoken. May the words we hear be those you wish heard. May it be all to your glory. Amen. So here we are. The season of Easter is over. It's Pentecost Sunday, and next week is Trinity Sunday. In the small hall over the past few weeks, we've been looking at Pentecost and trying to help our youngest members understand what it was all about. It's quite a tricky concept for children. And now today, you're celebrating with a party for the church. Last Sunday, Reverend Robert brought the beginning of the chapter in Acts. And this morning, we've again revisited the very beginning again and continued to discover that Peter's preached what is often referred to as the very first Christian sermon. Now, we have to remember something, and we have to keep this in our minds. The disciples have just watched their friend be tortured, crucified, and rise again. That's a lot to happen to these men. And just before today's reading, they witnessed that very friend ascend into heaven. It wasn't without a promise. Jesus promised that there would be a helper who would be with them. A promise that this helper, the Holy Spirit, would help them witness to the very ends of the earth. I actually wonder how his disciples felt. I can only imagine how I would feel. And my guess would be overwhelmed. I'm not sure my gratitude about that promise would be evident at that time. To me, it just seems very overwhelming. In the run-up to Easter, I saw a post on Instagram. I do quite like using Instagram for different things. Saying, what a difference seven days can make. People were commenting on it, not realising that it was talking about the time from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. But people I knew had commented on it, saying, oh yes, there can be such a difference in seven days. Not understanding what the post was really about. Now that must have been a very intense time for those first disciples, the first followers of Jesus. And it didn't end there. Now they've witnessed so much more. And I wonder how overwhelmed they actually feel. Are they feeling gratitude for the gift of the Holy Spirit? Or perhaps they're a little more reticent. reticent. Now when I begin to consider a service, I always look to see what other, I'm going to say wiser people than me think about the passages we share together. Pentecost was no different. And there are many different thoughts on this subject alone. In fact, I fell down a bit of a rabbit hole trying to discern where I was going to go. But I discovered something really interesting. I discovered a small church in America, in a very poor area. And the reason this was highlighted was because they said they'd had a Pentecost moment. So I thought, oh, I'm going to look into this. Now, this was a church in a very, very poor area in America where there was gang violence, there was lots happening around about them. And they were very small. They were attempting, this was back in the 70s and 80s, to bring t- different churches together to work in the community. This church didn't even have its own building. But they had a faithful group of worshippers who met sometimes in a hall in a local school, sometimes in another church's hall in an afternoon. Actually, not that much different from the very beginning of this church here. Anyway, there was lots of resistance to the work going on there. And dare I say it, derision. People were watching this church and referring to the church people as the little old ladies, implying that they wouldn't achieve much. Well, those little old ladies, as they were referred, didn't give in. They worked where the people were, where no one else was willing to work. They saw a need for a club to run, a kind of camp to run during the summer, 
for the younger children to keep them off the streets. And they set it up. These little old ladies who were downtrodden and, oh, that's not going to happen. They set up all of this. They prayed about it. Asked God, where do you want us to move to? And they did it. Then there was even more trouble in the neighbourhood. And funding, which had always been in place, was pulled from all of the locally run youth activities. The funding was put into more affluent areas because they were deemed to deserve it more. Facilities started to close and the trouble increased daily. People sat back and watched thinking, those little old ladies aren't going to make a difference. But they watched and boy, were they surprised. They knew that something needed to be done. They spent time in prayer. They spent time worshipping together. And they went out into the community. And they thought, we might be the ones to do something. So they moved. They found ways to ensure facilities were put in place. They brought back the gyms, the sports facilities and the places for the youth to meet. But the work didn't begin and end there. They set up Bible study groups in the poorest part of that area where nobody would work. And they worked with the people in these areas <coughs> to encourage them to take on a lead role in their communities to ensure the youth facilities and the youth work continued and the trouble stopped. And the official event to show other areas, this is how good it was. So one wee tiny church, they had an official gathering where they brought people from other areas to come and see what had been happening. Those little old ladies who'd been the object of such derision were still there. They'd got their hair freshly permed for the occasion, but they were there. Still there, being moved to action being moved by the Holy Spirit to be a witness to others, to show Jesus' love, to demonstrate his grace, and doing all this to make life better for others. They say that the Pentecost moment came when they were able to demonstrate to other areas what could be achieved, how to make life better for everyone. I don't think that was just a Pentecost moment. That was a Holy Spirit working with them, in them and through them. Not just for one day, but for a lifetime of change. Those little old ladies aren't there anymore. That work continues. We forget sometimes that the Holy Spirit didn't come for just one day didn't just appear for Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is with us all the time. God with us, our helper to guide us and teach us and show us. Now, we've just heard Peter preach from Joel, talking about young and old, men, sons and daughters, servants who will all see visions and dream dreams. He doesn't say that will only be for the wealthy, not just for those in high esteem, even just for those who are young and fit and healthy. No, Joe talks about those who are more marginalised, not just those we would have expected. It's not the ministers and the priests, but those who we would least expect. After all, was Jesus born not to a throne, but to a manger, not in a palace, but a stable? not to a royal family, but to a carpenter. To be seen first by those who were humble and on the margins. <clears throat> and here we are, in the community of social housing, where more social housing is still being built. An area where we can reach out <clears throat> and be part of a community who needs hope. We just need to be guided by the Holy Spirit and where we need to go. 
just now. Many believe, and there's lots of things on the internet saying that the Church of Scotland is in turmoil. Congregations are losing buildings. They're grieving. They're sad. People are leaving because they're not sure of their position anymore. But here's a thought. When the disciples were called, they didn't strive to stay with their home congregation. They didn't strive to say, we need our synagogue. And the Holy Spirit came and they were called to bear witness and make disciples of all nations. What did they do? Well, they were there, watching, waiting, praying for this helper they'd been promised. And they sold everything, pulled the resources, and went out, changing their lives in an instant. They didn't stop to fight for the beautiful church building. They moved as they were led. And I have heard that being said about beautiful church buildings. I was in a meeting in the town. There was a lot of people there from different churches. And people were saying, I don't know why people don't come to church. We have a beautiful building. My comment was, our building's quite ugly. But I don't come to church to look at my building. I come to church to look for God. I come to church to worship. Perhaps, as the current theme of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland suggests, we should be building together. Maybe the Holy Spirit is leading us to build together with other organisations and churches to help our community, to help our marginalised, and to show God's love to those who need it most. If those little old ladies in that church in America had said, no, we can't work with these people, where would that community be today? But there is a but here. We need to be open to the Holy Spirit working in us. This is Pentecost Sunday. And while we think of that day, we imagine noise and clamor and excitement and fear all mixed up together. It would have been noisy. But just because that very beginning of the church was noisy with sounds like wind blowing and tongues of fire and people talking in all different languages doesn't mean that this is the way it will be today. It might be. People might see and hear a change in you. They might question what has happened in your life. Or the Holy Spirit can be quietly and peacefully making a difference to you helping you gradually take on board an understanding that Jesus is working in you and through your life. Regardless, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives to enable us to see and hear God at work around us. And we will all be changed for the better. As we open our hearts and our minds to listen and to hear where the Holy Spirit is leading us, we need to be prepared to make that change. We need to move forward as a church to be where God calls us to be. We need to be able to make the changes necessary, not stay in our space with an attitude of, it's I been that way, but an attitude of, yes, Lord, here we are, send us. As we leave here today with the knowledge that we have been given a special helper. I wonder where the Holy Spirit is guiding us, where we're being called to bear witness. Which barriers are we being encouraged and enabled to jump over so that we can tell the good news and share it around? Let's take some time this week to listen to where God is calling us to help in our community, to see where the Holy Spirit is guiding us forward and to pray for understanding and unity.